Welcome to Valley's Gold, a show where we explore the people and places who feed and clothe us. On this episode, we travel to the San Joaquin Valley's west side to learn how broccoli and cauliflower are grown, as well as try some culinary dishes with these versatile vegetables. We'll also dive into water along the way. Please join me, Ryan Jacobson, on this adventure. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by the Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, an educational outreach program working to teach students about water and wildlife issues in California. Field trips are free for all schools and each trip's curriculum is based on learning about California water resources Valley Agriculture, and Native Wildlife. Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. At Brandt, our heroes are the men and women in the field, the folks who work hard to put food on our table. Join us in celebrating the Valley's real heroes. Brandt, professional agriculture. Family roots run deep on Valley Farms. Our journey begins at the Stamolis Produce Company in Fresno County. In 1927, Sparrow Stamolis was a young man from Greece who collected cantaloupe seeds while working as a waiter at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He dreamed of the day he would have his own farm. Grandfather passed away in 1944. She took over and pretty much did the whole thing with a single mom, not speaking English, eighth grade education, not even able to write. Um, the only thing she did have was a seamstress uh, diploma coming over from the old country. So she went ahead and did this whole thing all by herself. So it's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, women in ag, that's what we want to look at as we get older. My dad was much more involved as my grandmother was getting older and my father eventually took over. So our parents were great enough to let us go out and said, do what you want to do. But in essence, you have over, you know, 2,000 families to take care of out here. So do what you want to do and come back. And this is where we have been and we love it. So in the, I believe in the 90s when I first came out, when we first started, that's when corn, broccoli, honeydew, onions, everything was brand new. We were not bored per se with cantaloupes, but we needed something new out here. And as you're acquiring acres, you got to put different types of crops. Yeah, besides broccoli, stimulus also grows at sweet corn, cantaloupe, honeydew melons. Uh, we have pistachios and almonds. Oh, wow. And in the past, they've also grown uh, bell peppers, cotton, wheat, onion, just to name other few. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, how did you get involved in the agriculture industry? My passion for the ag industry started uh, back in high school when I was involved in the FFA. Uh, but my interest really did spark when I was a student at Fresno State. I really got interested into the plant science side of it which I ultimately graduated um, into my bachelor's in 2014. Awesome, and this is your backyard. I mean, you're just from yeah. down the street, relatively yeah. speaking, on the west side, right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> live in a fireball. It's only a couple miles away. Awesome, and one thing that I thought was just absolutely amazing is the fact that we grow here in California about 90% of the nation's broccoli. Yeah, we grow a lot of it here <laughs> on the west side too. <laughs> so is this a permanent crop, a rotational crop? And you know, how, how often will you come back and plant it into the field? Broccoli is actually a rotational crop. Um, so it grows one stalk, one head of broccoli, and we go into the field and harvest it, you know, we're done with the field. And then we'll go back in, disc everything back into the soil and get ready for the next crop. Got it, so it's a terminal harvest. You go through one time and that's, uh, that's it. That's correct, yeah. Well, let's get to the uh, actual growing of it. I mean, how do you get this field prepped for broccoli? Uh, we start off with uh, forming our beds. We plant them at 40 inch beds. Okay. We do two lines uh, per bed of seed we pre-irrigate our field uh, just so there's moisture in the soil when we plant our seed and after that just fertilizer foliars 
things like that. One thing that caught my attention is you said seed. You actually put a seed in the ground for this then. Yeah, um, all of our broccoli here at Stamola is, is grown by seed. Got it. And so then when you put that seed down there from the time the seed in the ground to the time that you're out here harvesting, how long is that timeline? A uh, commercial crop is about two and a half months, roughly 80 days, more harvest. or less. 80 days from seed to harvest. To harvest That's yes. absolutely amazing. Now, what about irrigation? Is Obviously, Mother Nature's probably taking care of some of it in normal years when we get that water, but how else do you irrigate this crop? We start off with sprinkler irrigation as the, you know, so we have little seedlings, and then move on to furrow irrigation when the plants grow bigger. Um, in the winter, we'll usually use about two acre feet of water. And then in the summer, we'll use uh, about three acre feet of water just because we have more evaporation. Got it. Now, is there one main variety we grow here in California or is there several different varieties? Here in California, we grow three major varieties, okay. um, which is Green Magic, Tradition, and Carabella. Um, and we grow all three here at Stimulus. And is it based off of the time of year when you grow those or is, it, is there something different about it? Our fall variety are the Green Magic and uh, Tradition. Our spring variety is the Carabella. I mean, I thought it was much more branchy, but essentially we're eating the flower. Yeah, it's actually an immature flower. How do you know it's ready for harvest? Are you tasting it? Are you sampling? Is there a sugar content? What, what makes it ready for harvest? We look at the size. So if we got really big stalks, uh, big heads, we know we're ready to go back in. You know, it's right in mid-spring. You guys have a lot of stuff going on behind us here. Explain that harvesting process to me. Okay, so our crews are composed of 25 members. We have 12 uh, men who walk the field. They're the ones cutting the broccoli. They will then toss the heads of broccoli onto the table um, where there are eight packers. They're responsible for packing and organizing the broccoli into the boxes. Then they will toss it back into the trailer uh, where the gentlemen will stack the boxes onto the pallets. And it goes directly into our cooler well, they, they'll ice it and out to the supermarkets. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Yeah. And Ricardo, the one thing that really caught my attention when you were explaining that process was the fact that you pack it with ice. That's a lot different than a lot of the fruits and vegetables I've seen up and down the valley, but there's a reason for that. Yeah, we go through a lot of ice at the cooler. Uh, we just want to make sure the broccoli is fresh by the time it gets to the consumer. This is being shipped everywhere that I could possibly imagine. Tell me all the places that Stamola's produce ends up. You can find Stamola's broccoli all over the United States, um, and we also ship to parts of Canada and Mexico as well. And if I want to learn more about Stamola's, where can I go? Uh, viewers can visit our website at www.stamolas.com, where they will find the history of Stamolas as well as contact information. Well, fantastic. Well, Ricardo, thanks for bringing me out to learn all about broccoli. It's been an incredible experience. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Ryan, for being out here. Appreciate it. We've traveled down the road to Huron to learn about cauliflower. I've met up with Daniel Hartwig of Wolf Enterprises. Happy to be out here today to learn more about cauliflower. But before we jump to that, tell me a little bit about your uh, background in farming. Uh, Ryan, my family has been farming for years and years and years. I go back on both sides, uh, my mother's and my father's sides. Uh, both of my, or my grandparents uh, have all farmed uh, in terms of growing cotton, growing alfalfa, growing grapes, growing tree fruit having some turkeys, some oh. bees. We got a little bit of everything in my background. Absolutely, which fits your background now here today because you're at Wolf Enterprises, a very diversified farming operation. That's correct, uh, Wolf Enterprises. We've been in business now for about 44 years, actually. Uh, I was started by Jack Wolf uh, back in 1974 and uh, started out growing mostly cotton and wheat, a lot of the west side crops uh, that you uh, hear so much about, uh, but it's now branched out and we grow processing tomatoes, almonds, pistachios, wheat, uh, wine grapes, and uh, if there's enough water, sometimes some cotton as well. Got it, and so we're here to talk about cauliflower. It's not one of your main crops. There's a little uniqueness to why you do this. Tell me about this little operation we see in back of us here. That's correct, Ryan. What we've got here is 15 acres. Uh, the cauliflower is the smaller pieces of that. And uh, what we do is we grow a summer and a winter garden, uh, all of which uh, goes to the community food bank in Fresno. So this is all donated? Correct, all of this food gets donated to, uh, to help out those that have a food shortage and have a food need and helps those folks uh, to be able to get some nutritious produce. Got it. It's not a main staple crop here in the valley. No, it's not. It's uh, really more of a, uh, of a coastal uh, type thing. It's a cooler climate uh, type of crop. And so it does a little, it'll do all right here in the winter. Uh, but you really don't have a whole lot of it here in the valley. But if you were in Monterey or if you were in Ventura or even Imperial counties, 
uh, you can see a little bit there. And that's uh, what's amazing when you say that is the fact that this field back behind us here looks incredibly gorgeous, just in spectacular display of what we have to offer here in the valley. Well, this is, this is actually some of the best soil we have on the ranch. Uh, we've double cropped it here for a, for a few years and that's really, really uh, improved the soil health. You can definitely see it by looking behind you here. And when you say double cropping, obviously we have some cabbage, we have some cauliflower. What will you plant in the summertime here? We'll have some peppers, we'll have some corn, uh, maybe a little bit of tomatoes. Kind of the beauty of what of what we do here is a lot of the the plants that we get the transplants that we get uh, actually come and they're donated uh, oh, wow. by some of the nurseries here locally uh, and so so we we're really kind of uh, blessed and that they will uh, give us different varieties and that in turn gets passed on to the community. So that walks me right into this growing process for cauliflower. You start with transplants it sounds like. That's correct. Transplants come from the nursery. They take the seeds and plant them there and they grow into a smaller plant and then they get implanted into the ground by a machine uh, that goes on the back of a tractor obviously and from that small plant uh, big things come. That's incredible. And how do you do the irrigation? Uh, what we have here is buried drip. Uh, it's buried in the ground. We can be as efficient as possible right there. There's no evaporation loss. The water line buried about a foot underground. Then it just uh, trickles out basically and helps keep, uh, keep the ground moist for the plant. And that's one of the things I talked about this beautiful field. It's beautiful because of the uniformity of the water application and the fertigation that takes place. Correct, yeah. And we actually don't have to use that many inputs here really, fertilizers, because with the double cropping, there's constantly breaking down and providing a nitrogen source for the next uh, cropping uh, cycle that's gonna come through. Got it, so when did these transplants go in the ground? here in the valley. Uh, these here went in in November. So we're looking at about what, four, uh, four months or so yeah. of uh, growing time in here. And it was a little bit of an unusual spring and a winter time there in the sense that we had some cold weather in February. These things kind of really just stopped growing for a little bit there, but otherwise they've really taken off now. Yeah, and we have some beautiful fruit here to, to show and it's uh, it's really sized up really well and they've really taken off here in the last couple weeks. And so now jump into the cauliflowers process through, you know, here we are late March and you're harvesting it. What does this harvest season consist of? There's a crew that goes through. Uh, here we do it a little bit different because it's not going to a fresh yeah. market uh, per se, uh, going to the to the community food bank. So we have a crew of about five uh, folks, including a tractor driver, and they're going through and looking for the best pieces right now. They'll probably go through twice. They're going through cutting off the bits of plant that are uh, that are still attached to the head and, uh, and tossing it up there and putting them in bins. Got it. So Daniel, this is an incredible partnership that you guys have going out here. How much on an annual basis do you guys donate to the food bank? Uh, every year between the two gardens, we do between four and 500,000 pounds of food. And then one thing that I find just incredibly amazing is the fact that you're giving it to the local food bank, but then they work with other food banks up and down the state. So this may end up, you know, whether it's in Northern California or Southern California. True, it benefits, you know, really up and down the Central Valley. It's, it's a wonderful program. Well, Daniel, thanks so much for educating me about cauliflower and this amazing, amazing display of a donation that we have going on out here. Sure, thank you. Thanks. We are on Fresno County's west side near Five Points to learn about the fuel of California's agricultural industry, water. We have been joined by Gail Holman of Westlands Water District. I am excited to learn about water. It's so important to the crops that we have here in the San Joaquin Valley in California, and it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely, and we want to help educate you and the rest of the public about the importance of water. Well, let's begin with What's your background? How'd you get started in the water world? So I am a public affairs representative for Westlands and I've been there for a little over seven years. And actually I never had a water background, but you can't help but know water if you grow up in this area. And I grew up in this area and understood from a very young age how important water really is. And with Fresno County Bar Bureau, I deal a lot with water. You never know too much. There's always something to learn about the water world. Absolutely, I'm learning every single day. Westlands Water District, what is that? So we are the largest agricultural water district in the nation. We have 600,000 acres of prime farmland in two counties, Fresno and Kings counties, and we represent 700 family farms. That's larger than some states out there. Absolutely. That's actually about a thousand square miles of prime farmland where we're growing some of the best food that this nation has seen. There's a little bit of everything out just within this one district. Absolutely. We grow more than 60 different crops. And our crops are not just fresh, but they're frozen, dried, processed. And they're shipped not only nationally, but some of our crops are shipped internationally. Well, now let's move it on to the water system. You talk about a water district. You're delivering water to farmers and municipalities. How does that happen? First of all, let's just take into consideration that all the water delivered is in a fully enclosed buried um, delivery system, in a, a fully enclosed pipe system. And it's water that comes off the San Luis Canal, which is also called the California Aqueduct. And it's water that comes through the Delta and is brought into the San Luis Canal where then water deliveries occur. 
This is part of a bigger infrastructure system. It's part of what system? It's called the San Luis Unit. And so we have a number of reservoirs that are built into this project. And so the water is then originates up in Northern California in Lake Shasta area, brought down through the Sacramento River and then pumped through the Delta, uh, through the Jones pumping plant and into the San Luis Reservoir where our growers are then able to take that water for delivery. Westlands is part of the Central Valley Project, a federal water management system that provides water to California's Central Valley. Bureau of Reclamation is actually the managing agency and their role is to provide water and to manage it and to provide the upkeep. And so we're fortunate to be one of the contract agencies as we're a public water agency to receive that contract allocation here right in the Central Valley. A couple distinctive things that really stick out in the district and it happens to be that color blue. It's really the distinguishing mark of the district. Absolutely. Each field then you're going to see what I call like a fire hydrant that pops up out of the soil and each field has that blue fire hydrant that's the actual water delivery and on top of that is a meter because everything within Westlands is measured and metered so we only use what we need nothing more nothing less. That's one thing that I know they're so proud about here it's just more crop for a drop I mean the we're using less water today but we're growing a whole lot more crop for that drop. Absolutely so it's wonderful and windy on days like today and dry but you know that is the perfect climate to get a high yield product and that's something that our growers are committed to whether whether it's a rainy day or a super hot day, they're here 24 seven and we're here to support them as best we can. Gail, our viewers at home that want to learn more about California water, where can they go? They can go to our website. It's www.ca.gov or they can go to the Farm Water Coalition website, which has some great educational materials as well. And their website is farmwater.org. California farmers are doing some amazing things. So thank you for sharing this story about water. My pleasure. Thank you. We are at the Valley PBS studio to cook with my good friend, Rod Hansen of The Painted Table. Well, I'm excited because every time you come on stage, I get to eat. So yes, you do. Today, we're doing some amazing things with broccoli and cauliflower. Yes, we are. But before I jump to that, I love growing the food. But well, you love cooking it. When did that yes, start for you? That started for me at a young age. Uh, all my family cooked. Uh, I grew up on a farm, and we had uh, fresh produce around us at all times. And today, you guys have an amazing venture going on, the yes. Painted Table. Yes, Tell me about do. the Painted Table. Pa the Painted Table is a full catering and event service. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th year. Oh, wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So... You're gonna show us why the painted table is so amazing because we're gonna cook right now. Yes, we what are. What are we doing today? We are making, uh, we're using cauliflower. So we're gonna make a curried cauliflower with watercress salad and a citrus vinaigrette. And you always tell me this is an easy to do recipe at home. <laughs> You're gonna and make it, me believe that? I'm gonna make you name? believe it because I'm gonna put you to work today. Okay. You're gonna be helping me make this. So. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's, it's very good. I mean, cauliflower is an amazing, amazing thing. I mean, you can turn it into anything you want. You can what? flavor it. I don't wanna call it a superfood, but it's being superly used in a bunch of different products now. It is, and it is kind of a superfood. It's full of so many good vitamins, full of fiber. So it's a very healthy thing. And I always say this is fun for the kids because, I mean, they always say it looks like brains. Well, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Br brains are trees, you know, exactly. clouds. You have all kinds, all of, kinds fun of things, things with it. So, so let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with this. We're gonna just take out, uh, we're gonna pull some of these leaves off here. So I'm just kind of trying to cut the majority off, get down into there, okay. and just pull some off. And we'll just kind of cut the rest of those off. And the stock, the stock, stock right? is yeah. edible. Yeah. It is edible. And it's probably so, full of all kinds of nutrients. Of so. course it is, and uh, more fiber even. <laughs> <laughs> this right here. Huh? And I'm gonna have you help me out if you wanna grab one of those. And we're just gonna kind of pull them apart. Sprinkle that right on. This is a little bit of turmeric. And for those viewers at home that want to get this recipe, the one thing, we've made it easy. It's on our website. Yes, it is. Valleysgold.org, and yes, they can check is. it out. And it's, as I said, so easy, you're going to finish <laughs> this off now. So. It is. And it's a very forgiving recipe. You know, if you forget something in the recipe or a measurement, it's still if it looks edible. good, it's still great. <laughs> There's really no way to mess this up. So we're going to put a little bit of salt on there, a little bit of pepper. 
And then we're just gonna toss that a little more, get it all coated nice and even. I think we're looking good. So we're going to put that on a sheet pan and okay. put it in the oven. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> well, for this part, yes. <laughs> and so Rod, when that's cooking, we're gonna make the toppings for it. Yes, we are. So while that's in there, we're making the citrus vinaigrette. Okay. So I'm gonna put you to work on this one. I love I'm, being put I'm gonna to have work. you help me out a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so first I'm gonna have you take those lemons, or the lemon and the orange, and okay. I'm gonna have you zest those. Uh, and so, wow, okay. Yeah, so if you could zest that, grab one of those little bowls right next I to you. do that. And just zest it right into there. So while you do that, I'm gonna put the rest of the components into the food processor. So I have a couple really small shallots here. If you really like shallots, you could throw a bunch in. Okay. If you don't, you can leave them out. Uh, a little uh, clove of garlic, and then we have some fresh thyme. Is there some secret to the zesting here? There is actually. <laughs> I, I, can, I can show you a you, different way. <laughs> you probably should have told, shown me because I'm not sure I quite know what I'm doing let right. Me, let me show you an easier way. The easier way is actually this way right here. So just take and go like this. And oh. then see you're catching it right up on the top. Wow, yeah, that would have And you can kind of see where you're zesting there a little better, right? Absolutely. And also the, the thing with this is you're not smashing the uh, blades there as much, so. Got it, okay. And then you can just take that and push right in. Right in, perfect. Okay. And the juice, what's the secret on the juice? So the secret on the juice, just cut that in half, like this. Okay. Okay. And, and we're gonna utilize this right here, I'm assuming. Yeah, just take it and psh, Look at that. I got this one figured out. So. <laughs> You're doing just fine. Okay, so I think I have our juice here. Beautiful, look Come at that. Over. So I'm just gonna take that juice, pop it right in. Okay. Like that, and now the zest. Okay, so we're just gonna give that a little spin again. Okay. Get it all nice and incorporated. There we go. So now we're going to drizzle in some extra virgin olive oil and that's gonna pull it all together. Got it, okay. Okay, and that's it. There we have it, our dressing. That's our dressing. So our cauliflower was being cooked for, you said about 12 to 15 minutes? Yeah, it was about 12 to 14 minutes or so, okay. depending, 400 degrees. And so you can see now, look at, that's nice and all oh, brown it's and it's gorgeous. softened and all the colors. My gosh, that's amazing. Doesn't do, it smell do I great? get to, I, I want to cheat a little Try bit. Try one, it's a little oh. hot, yeah. <laughs> That's fabulous by itself. Isn't that amazing? I mean, by itself, that would be a great little side dish. Absolutely. So, so let's, we're, we're, we're going to make it better in a salad. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, all what right. Do we do here? And so this is just some watercress that we've washed, trimmed it. So I just like to lay down a little layer there. Okay. And then we move on to all of our other fun things. So. And then we have some dates. Dates, that's what I was yes. thinking. So, and that's, I, I do believe dates are one of those underutilized fruits that really can add so much to your salads or just You're to right. your everyday flares. So. You're right. And, you know, they just have a really nice texture. They taste kind of like brown sugar to me, you know, yep. in a fruit. And uh, I just, I like that. And now we'll just place some cauliflower around. Oh, wow. We talk about California agriculture, that's on full display here right exactly. now. Exactly, so. so we're just accenting it a little bit. So from here now, we are going to take our dressing, okay. and if you'd like to take and just drizzle some on, and you could put as much or as little as you like. I don't like a lot of dressing on it, I think just a little bit. I am ready to try. <laughs> uh, it looks like it. I cheated and had a little bit of cauliflower a little bit earlier, but now to get the full taste. Well, now you get so. to taste the everything together, so try to get a bite with a little bit of everything. That's good. You have all the it, flavors going through, yeah, getting no, them all? Yeah, absolutely. I was gonna say, definitely got the sweetness and that uh, the, the, the topping you put on is just mm -hmm, so good. Mm -hmm. And that vinaigrette, the citrus vinaigrette just really ties it all together. It's kind of like California on a plate here. <laughs> it really is. Um, and I'm just amazed, as we said earlier, the dates and the raisins, how it all just helps tie it all together, so. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. As you said, California on a plate, the way that you can bring mm. spice and mm -hmm. that sugar and that mm -hmm. salty taste all together on yeah. one plate. Yeah. 
using fresh ingredients is just absolutely unbelievable. Exactly, and some great dried ingredients, some golden California raisins, and it's just amazing. Well, amazing. Chef, chef Rod, you never cease to amaze me what you're Thank able you. to pull off here. <laughs> and for all of our viewers at home, we did cauliflower right now, but they can actually go to our valleysgold.org and actually check out and see broccoli cooking as well that we're yes, going to do they as can. well. Yes, they because can. Because these were two were covered in this episode and absolutely two of California's favorites. So yes. with that, thank you so much for once again hosting me and having a fabulous plate to show off to our viewers here. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to all of you for watching Valley's Gold. I hope you join us again. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by the Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, an educational outreach program working to teach students about water and wildlife issues in California. Field trips are free for all schools and each trip's curriculum is based on learning about California water resources Valley Agriculture, and Native Wildlife. Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers, Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. At Brandt, our heroes are the men and women in the field, the folks who work hard to put food on our table. Join us in celebrating the Valley's real heroes. Brandt, professional agriculture. Valley PBS is committed to teaching children the importance of agriculture. Valley's Gold Education Through Agriculture offers lessons for elementary school students. To download free worksheets and activity kits and to watch child-friendly videos about the crops explored on Valley's Gold, visit valleysgold.org and click on Education.